So, I'm going to be spoiling a lot of the first episode in this, well, pretty much the entire first episode in this kind of talk through. So, if you don't want spoilers, don't watch this yet, go watch the first episode. It's only about 20 minutes long, and it'll give you a better jumping off point to actually understand what I'm talking about. Okay. So this is my second recording ramble of uh, Roku Danashi because... Yeah, Roku Danashi. Because, uh... I feel like I skipped over quite a few points that I was trying to make, so this one will be a little more in brief. Um, and might be a little bit shorter because I'm running out of time actually as well. But uh, yeah, Roku Danashi is a show that is coming out right now, but right now, as of recording this, there's only one episode that's officially aired in Japan. Um, uh, though I believe it's going to be a 12, uh, 12 episode. Yeah, it's 12. So it's already airing April 4th, and the first episode's out, and I, I guess I'm just... I'm thoroughly unimpressed. And I'm not... Okay. So, it's not that the show did anything particularly wrong, it's just that it's doing nothing really original. It feels very, very similar to a lot of other shows. And this isn't really a bad thing by itself, but the problem is it's doing nothing to stand out as well. So everything in the industry is just kind of becoming... Well, I mean, this has been a growing issue, is everything in the anime industry is becoming very homogenous. It's not designed to be art anymore, it's designed just to be a product. and. Uh, Demolition D has actually talked about this a little bit. It, it really is an issue when everything out there in the industry isn't designed to be original or productive or creative or, you know, proper art. It just wants to make money, and the problem is that's kind of self-destructive because over time, everything, like, this is this is a show which is, I guess, I don't know what exactly it did to spark such a reaction from me, I suppose, but I guess it's, it's, a, it's a good launching point to talk about the issue more that the industry is really harming itself because everything's turning into the same thing, and when everything's the same, no one has any reason to buy anything because, I mean, just kind of look at, like, an art gallery show with a variety of things, with a variety of styles. It doesn't just show a blue portrait or even one style of art, like, everything's turning into the same thing, so there's no reason to go anywhere, and there's no variety, like... Uh, at this point, the mecha genres shrunk incredibly small. Um, uh, my favorite genre, horror and su suspense and drama, which are often, like, they they start small and then they grow, like, progressively. We're talking financial uh, financial growth, at least. Shows like that turn a profit over time. It's a little slower, but uh, it, it just generates steam and momentum and it gains more over time. Versus a show like this, maybe it, it gets someone Jones in for a little bit, like, the style of show again. And they might spend a hundred bucks and that's it. And maybe someone else spent a hundred bucks and that's it. Like, there's some action. There's certainly some, like, pull to it. But it doesn't generate a good amount of financial success in the long term. It just has a short little burst. And that's not... That's really, really bad for the industry. And you know, the whole industry... This is a problem with the whole industry. But uh, it's really, really bad for the studio because they're not... Their revenue stream is in increments instead of a proper flow. Um... And interest and trust is just kind of waning, and this is... I feel like this, is, this isn't this is just a, a, a problem with um, the anime community. It's its a problem with a lot of other industries that have started to globalize, I suppose. In order to hit a very broad audience, they kind of... They all start aiming for the same, but they all start making their goals and their ambitions very, very similar to reach the widest audience, but the widest audience doesn't always want to pour like they don't get devoted they don't get uh they don't really really care about it in large it won't see large success because let's face it the show is so similar to other things and I'm, i've gotten way off track at this point jesus christ um i, I really <laughs> i ran with that point a little too long so let me get back to the point at hand uh the setting for the show is a magical high school which itself isn't very creative. It looks very, very similar to um, uh, Legend of the Legendary Heroes with a magic system. In, the, in this plot, at least, there's a school, and oddly enough, at least from the translation that I read, it is the only high school, and it's the most important one. So, off to a bad start. There's uh, Already we've shot variety in the foot. We've limited the entire, like, the world is centric. There's no growing aspect to it. Uh, what else we got? Like, the main character, or the main, the main guy in the show. Is kind of that like lazy sloth doesn't really do anything well. Uh, he actually doesn't do anything well. And I, at least at first I was like, oh, okay, he's lazy, but he's really good at something. We're gonna play this trope. Uh, it turns out he's bad at everything. He doesn't really have any defining characteristic other than being kind of smug and dumb. All the other teachers, especially even like the Snape teacher, doesn't care for him. Like they think he's garbage, and he is garbage. And at the show so far, at least at the end of episode one, has thoroughly instilled the fact that he 
he's garbage. Like he's nothing. He's not good. Uh, he's not good. At, he's not good at magic, which is the one thing he's supposed to be teaching. I thought at first, like, uh, like I was saying, he was going to be good at uh, military, like military magic, whatever the fuck it is, because it doesn't seem like the school is centered around military. It's just kind of like a side aspect, even though there's duels for some reason. So he had a bunch of other compar uh, comparisons which do the exact same thing in the first episode. Um, but he just he's doing nothing right now, and it's really weird. And then the two. Uh, the two main girls, I guess, they're sisters, kind of. I'm not sure exactly what the story behind that is, but... Uh, one plays the straight man, and the other one is just kind of like the dopey idiot. <laughs> Their outfits are really ridiculous. Um, it, it looks like Kaze, uh, the one sub-girl thing. The outfits look exactly like the sub-girl thing. Um, I didn't watch the show, I don't know, but it, it looks exactly like that. I think it's Kaze Sima? Kaze Stigma? I don't know what that shit. But like the guy uniforms look fine, which is a weird thing. Like the girls just like it's a short it's less than a tank top. It's a short skirt. <laughs> and that's it. There's nothing else. It shows off their belly buttons and like the most blatant sexual appeal there possibly is. And the guy uniforms look I haven't seen them much, but they look relatively fine. They look like normal. They actually look a little military, but they're not. So I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened. So, I guess, <laughs> that's one of the most original things about the show, actually, is the outfits are so ridiculous, like, they've gone to another level to, to try and make a product, it's just, they've, they've shot everything in the foot, Jesus. Like, the opening scenes are really, really similar to other things, like, uh, there's that whole bump into each other while someone's running, the very start, what else was there? There was a duel by the end of the first episode, which is similar to Zero no Sugumiya, um, and like a hundred fucking other shows, um, I'm ignoring my notes again. Uh, what did I write down? Oh, I guess the dynamic between the two main uh, the two main girls, at least, is literally the same as uh, Mayo Chiki, Princess Lover, Ladies vs. Butlers a little bit, and then Masamune, Kun Revenge. Uh, the dynamic there is exactly the same as all the other shows, so if I'm looking for that, I've already found it somewhere else. Uh, if I'm looking for the setting, I've found Zero no Sugumiya, or Index a little bit, because it's not as much magic, but, well, okay, there's a lot of magic, but it's the same central city that's like... Even that was a more expansive world, especially when they went into it. This is the central city we're spending, mo spending most of our, if not all of our time in. The MC is exactly like my Reiner Lude or Masamune again. Or even a little bit Zelos, but not like a bad Zelos uh, from Tales of Symphonia. Uh, the witch that no one's supposed to be trusting, I suppose. Who's supposed to be teaching and is fucking not. Uh, looks exactly like Cynthia or Darkness or someone else. I don't know, the girl from IS, I suppose. And it's weird because she's needlessly defensive of the, the MC. For some reason, she's like, "Well, you can insult me, but not him." But why? Because he's nothing. He, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't understand, and that's fine. I under, that's that's fine for now, but I don't see that being filled in at all. I, I don't see that being fixed. Um, I guess I'll forgive. Th there's one scene that's uh, again another like another really heavy trope in the series. Like honestly, the whole first episode is literally just tropes. Um, but where he walks in on the girls, like he wasn't creative or anything, but. I'll kind of give it a pass because it's the first episode and like every show does this, so that's the one pass it gets, I suppose. <laughs> it has plenty of other flaws I'm pointing out. There's that, and then even like the Sky Castle, um, I forgot about this. Even like uh, the one interesting thing the, um, that's, I suppose, a bit different is the floating Sky Castle or whatever the hell it is. Um, that's up in the sky. It's not even that unique, like it's literally Laputa or uh, Pergius' is dead, uh, Pergius. The Pergius is castle thing from uh, Mahosho Tenshi, I can't pronounce that one, uh, which probably will be animated in the next year or two. That one's going to come up soon enough, I, I can guarantee that. Um, so like, everything it's doing is super similar, uh, similar, super similar, similar, what the fuck? And it's just got nothing, it's got nothing original. Um, what other, what else can I point out? Oh, the dual scene. The dual scene at the very end of the episode, um, I thought it was going to be uh, like, oh, he's not garbage, but no, he's garbage. Um, it's literally imitating, uh, Roku Calvary, uh, Chivalry of a Failed Knight, Asterisk Wars, Zero no Sukumiya again, what the fuck else is there, Freezing, uh, IS, 100, I don't know why this is such, okay, actually, I know why this is trope is used so much, because it's a good, it's a good point to demonstrate how good the main character is at something, but he doesn't even do that. It's just all these flaws and all these similarities to everything else makes it seem... Like, he just blends in at this point, and I'm not sure who the studio behind it is. Let me, let me find out real quick. It's by Linden Films. I don't know who the hell this is. Who the fuck is Linden? Oh. Oh. Okay, so Linden Films is, um, I don't know if they're newer or not. 
They don't have many noteworthy shows. Oh, they have initial. Oh, they have a movie initial date. Okay, and they've Arslan Senke, which um, was supposed to be bigger than it was. Actually, it's a reboot technically, but that's not important. Oh no, there's two initial D movies. Yeah, they don't have many. Okay, so I I'm gonna assume they're a new newer studio. I'm just not super familiar with them, I suppose. So I can't speak of what the taste is. Um, they also have Yamada and Seven Witches, which I forgot got animated like two years ago. Um, I, I obviously haven't read it. I kind of just skipped over it because it sounded <laughs> the same as everything else. But uh, yeah, nothing super noteworthy. I, I, probably the most is Initial D movies, which let's be honest, are pretty good. And then they have the Berserk 2016, which is a hot mess <laughs> to say the least. I'm not sure when they were founded. I'm going to assume they're a newer studio, but maybe they're a branch of something else. I'm not too familiar. So that's that's what it is. It's it's Linden, fuck. Um, I was hoping I could get something. I thought it would be something like uh, A1 or something, because A1 loves doing shit like this. But uh, nope. Nope. Not today. I, I pretty much gotten super off track. I didn't even talk about what I was supposed to be talking about. But yeah, the, the show just really blends in with everything else. It's, it's doing nothing for me. I'll probably watch the next episode. And that's it. Because I, I don't see this going anywhere. I honestly don't.